Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today, back with another video. This one's gonna be a quick one. It's pretty much how can you reduce your utility bill um, in places where it's high or even in places where it's low but you have time of use plans or places where you just need it for backup and outages. Um, so I'm in Montreal, Canada, uh, in the province of Quebec. Our electricity rates are really low so we're talking about between four cents and ten cents usually uh during um regular time and we do have some um i would say dy dynamic pricing we have plans that uh, we call it winter credit option uh, where uh, the utility tells you to reduce your consumption in certain times to which you're not penalized but you can gain a lot of money um, if you actually uh, end up reducing your consumption then you have other rates like Flex D or Rate DT, to which um, the, your rate is very low throughout the year, but then you're penalized if you're not uh, reducing your consumption when the utility tells you to do so. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you guys today what my setup is to, cause I do have the Rate DT, uh, which is dual energy, cause I also have a gas furnace, a natural gas furnace, and I do have a electric heat pump. Um, so my rate entitles me to have very low rates throughout the whole year at four cents per kilowatt hour, um, but then increases when the temperature is colder to which the utility forces the usage of my furnace. And uh, there's a light that I'll show you guys um, later. Uh, when that light lights up, that means all my rate is around 26 uh, cents per kilowatt hour, which might still be lower for some people, depending on where you are on the planet. Uh, depending on some states as well where the rates are really high but here in Canada the rates are relatively low uh, so it's not really for saving a lot in Canada but you do you can actually save a lot depending on the rates you have but it's more also how do you feature proof your installation and also uh, be ready for any contingencies for in cases where the utility is not reliable uh, we, we, we do have a lot of ice storms too uh, so last two years ago and that's very recent. So we're in 2025, two years ago, we had an, uh, uh, an ice storm. And here in Montreal, the west part of the Montreal, uh, I was without electricity for four or five days. And so when you have young kids or even toddlers, infants, you know, that may be very uh, difficult. Even if you do have other resources, the whole island was uh, without power for a long time. And especially when you have family and they all live also in the same region, it's really hard to go to, you know, family members or like, you know, shelters. Uh, so in this case, how do you make sure that you're ready for any sort of, you know, resilience plan for your house? So this is what I'm gonna show you really quick what I have as a setup. Doesn't mean this is what you have to do. It's this quite expensive system. Uh, you're not gonna invest in the system just to save money. So you have to think it as a whole to see, is this worth it for me? If yes, well, this is one of the options that you can have in Montreal, Canada or anywhere in, uh, in North America. This system, I did buy it in the States. I bought it from Signature Solar. Uh, I think it's also available in Canada. Uh, so Signature Solar, uh, they're very specialized in this kind of stuff. Off-grid, on-grid, hybrid inverters, batteries. So you guys can check them out. I do have an affiliate link in the description. So you guys can take a look. Um, so yeah, so let me show you what I have, uh, what kind of rates I have too. And then afterwards, I'll show you the uh, installation. So for those who have rate DT, so dual energy with Hydro Quebec, you guys probably know this light here. Uh, so this light turns on when uh, outside is minus 12 Celsius and colder. And so that's connected to the meter at the hydrometer outside, um, which in turn lights up this light here when uh, your rate is higher and also forces the from the heat pump to stop and switches the, the furnace to the gas furnace uh, to force the usage of um, natural gas. Uh, so the rate is super high now. It's at 26 uh, cents kilowatt hour. I know in my some states <laughs> that might be normal, but for us that's expensive in Quebec, Canada. Uh, our rates are usually between 4 cents and 10 cents. Uh, that's usually the going rate. Uh, for rate DT, it's 4 cents. Um, and when it's high rate is 26 cents. Uh, so when I see this light, clearly, um, 
everything is expensive. We try not to use stuff, but we don't also want to reduce our quality of life. So that's why I found out a solution. I put in place a solution to respond one for high rates for here, which is a choice I made, but also for uh, ice storms and outages that we do have frequently here in Montreal, Quebec. So let me show you the system I have. So this is the system I have at home. As you can see, I do have the main panel coming from Hydro-Quebec here, and which I do have still a lot of circuits here, uh, but these are non-critical circuits. So everything related to my heat pump, my EV car chargers, and some other stuff that really I can go by and I'll be still good for an outage, uh, which I want to require. Um, example, the stove, is still in here so anything most of the 240 uh, voltage is here and then after you have my sub panel which is powered also by hydro uh, but it's also powered by this one so hydro goes through here and then bypasses and powers my sub panel uh, so what you have here is all the critical load so anything that's 120 volt is on this panel one thing that's 240 volt, actually two of them, is my, um, this one is here is my dryer, which is not a critical load. It's just to shut off my excess power when I do have too much battery here. Uh, and then I do have my EV charger as well. So it's one of the ways I can uh, actually shut off power if I have too much solar production. But those I can control. So the dryer and the EV chargers, they don't always run. I can control those. So it's mainly my critical loads, which is uh, this. Um, you have my fridge, you have my freezer, you have the microwave, my air fryer, all the lights, all the outlets in the house, uh, the Wi-Fi, the TV, everything that's most of the uh, 120 volt has been transferred to the set panel. And then, the center of all this is an inverter here. This converts electricity from DC to AC. So that means everything that's stored in this battery, this is a 16 kilowatt hour battery, gets transfers to this and then powers the house. I also have solar panels. So let me just show you guys in the back. I don't know if you see it. You have some solar panels in the back and I have some in the front. So that comes here and also powers the battery. So that means you get the best of both worlds. You get battery energy stored and you get free energy from the sun, which powers the battery uh, afterwards. You can also power the battery through hydro. So let's say your rate is pretty low uh, throughout the day, uh, depending if you have time of use, if you have flex D, if you have a rate DT, or even have winter credit options. So that means you charge the battery full when the rate is really low, and then use the battery to power the house when the rate is more expensive. So that really works out for those who, I currently have rate DT, so dual energy. Uh, my rate is four cents, that's really cheap. So I charge the battery whenever I can, or with the solar. And then when uh, the light comes on, which I showed you before, I think I get charged 26 cents. So it's still winning here, even with the conversion loss. That means going from AC to DC and then DC to AC afterwards. All right. Uh, so this one is capable of doing 12,000 uh, output. And if you have solar, you can do 15,000 of AC output. That's plenty enough for uh, anyone who wants to power anything in the house. 15,000 watts is quite a lot. Uh, my furnace is also a gas furnace, so I don't take that much power. But if you have electric heating, then that's an issue. Because uh, one of the circuits here is my gas furnace, which I can still heat the house in this case, uh, even when there's no electricity. If you have electric heating, then uh, the setup might be different for you. Since we're in Canada, the heating is something that, you know, people ask me a lot of questions as well. I just want to focus a little more on the heating itself. My heating here is a heat pump. So it's a high efficiency heat pump here on a 30 amper breaker here. So that's the one that's being used all the time. Uh, it's a high efficient uh, heat pump. So that means even at minus 15, minus 20, it's still going. It provides enough heat for the house. But when my rate is high, but anything minus 12, I told you and over, 
Hydro Quebec pushes it so it can go to uh, the furnace. The furnace is powered in my sub panel on 120 volt. Why is that? It's because the furnace only uses uh, the fan to actually, uh, and the fan and the thermostat to work. The rest is being worked with the uh, natural gas. So it just need a pilot and the gas lights up uh, and then you get heat. And then you only need 120 to actually make the furnace work in this case because it's a natural gas furnace. So I can power that with the inverter, no problem. So that's why I'm able to do this because I don't have electric heating. The electric heating is the heat pump, in which case it's the hydro that's powering it all the time at four cents. But hydro is forcing the switch when it's a high rate anyways, automatically to the, uh, to the furnace, the gas furnace. So I don't even have to worry about that. It's done automatically at the meter when the light goes red. Um, so when that switch happens automatically, while well, the inverter obviously is already powering the sub panel, takes over so I don't have high rates as well. Another question I get a lot is, well, how long is 16 kilowatt hours? Is this enough for me? Uh, so it really depends on your needs and how much you have in the sub panel that's powering your, um, the inverters powering the sub panel. In my case, 16 kilowatt hour is plenty. It's mainly for outages, um, reducing my, my electricity usage on high rates. So it's plenty enough. Just to give you guys an example, this was charged 100% last night. Um, so I turned it on, I believe, at 9 o'clock. I woke up this morning at 7. It was still at 62%. Um, so it really depends what load you're using. If you have electric heating, obviously this is not going to work out. Even the, uh, the 12,000 XP, you have to check if that's enough. So it really, really, really depends on your usage. 16 kilowatt hour, for me, it's enough. And I know that during the day, solar will kick in. So just to show you guys an example. So we're currently at 839, and I'm only getting 50 watts, I think. Is it 50 watts? No, I'm getting, oh yeah, it's quite a lot, actually. I'm getting around 500 watts of solar in this case, and some of it is going to the uh, battery, the rest is going to the house. Um, so I say 500 is a lot, but obviously usually on peak time, when it's gonna be around nine, 10 o'clock, I'm gonna start getting around 1,000. So it really depends. It's gonna recharge the battery, and then this battery is gonna you know, get full, and 16 kilowatt hours is enough for me. For other people, you might need three or four batteries. So really uh, spec out your system according to your needs. And the other thing is this one, like I said, it can do 15,000 watts AC with uh, PV coming in, uh, so solar coming in a lot. So that's also something to consider. And if you have too much battery, it's gonna start stop pulling solar as well. So that's where my EV charger and my dryer, when I have to do <laughs> loads, and, and trust me, we do have to do a lot here. We have two young kids. Um, so in that case, we do shut off the excess power. And the EV is pretty good because this one also gives me back money. So this is the Pion Power. They have a green mouse program to which um, I get 10 cents back for each kilowatt I use to charge this car. So this is related to the carbon credits in Canada. So imagine this, I don't even have to pay for the electricity that I'm getting here and I'm getting 10 cents back. So that's uh, amazing. Because the only thing is I'm not selling back to the grid. So this is an off grid inverter. So not connected to the utility. So that means it's not sending back power to the utility. And if you wanna do that, you will have to get a hybrid inverter to which you also have to um, contact hydro and you have a separate plan for that. You cannot combine two different plans yet. That's something Hydro's, uh, Hydro Quebec is coming up soon. But so far is, well, you gotta get one plan, but you cannot sell back. But eventually they're coming up with different plans where you can sell back and also have example time of use or rate DT, flex D, and all the different rates as well. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I know that's something that's coming as well. And for Hydro Quebec, they're also coming in with solar panels. Like I mentioned, I have solar panels in the back and in the front. Uh, they're coming up with subsidies so people can install solar panels. That's it, folks. Uh, that's all I have for you today. If you did like the content of the video, please like it. Um, and if you want to be notified for any other videos that I'll be uh, publishing, please subscribe to the channel. 
And, and also, this is not an in-depth video. I do have other ones that you can go check uh, in my channel on the installation, what I did. Uh, and also, if you have any ideas on new videos, uh, comments on the current one, please don't hesitate and write them in the section below as well. Like I mentioned, this is not a setup for everyone. This is what works best for me. I'm not saying this is what you should buy. I'm not telling you you should spend this much amount of money. Uh, it is quite expensive too. So you have to think about, like I said, you know, you have to factor in a lot of variables. But if it does make sense to you, well, this is one of the options um, that's on the market. Uh, so that's it, guys. Um, until then, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.